Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. It's Wednesday, so you know what that means. It's time for another midweek mini mail call. I think we're up to 42, which I'm gonna say it again, it blows my mind. For today's video, we have some CRT action. And I know people groan about it, although I had lots of comments last time I said that, that people don't groan. So either way, it's a CRT video. Before we get started with the video though, I wanna mention that I have finally gone ahead and set up a Patreon account. People have been asking me to do it for quite a long time, and I guess as I approach 100,000 subscribers, I've finally done it. And what's funny is at the time I'm recording this, I haven't actually announced on any of my videos that I have set up Patreon, although a couple have gone live, I think one or maybe two, where I had a link to the Patreon page in the description and I actually have a bunch of people who have already signed up as patrons. So I really, really have to thank those people who have done that, especially before I've even officially announced it. So thanks again to those viewers who have become patrons. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna be doing the Patreon account, but at the minimum, you get early access to my videos. I'll post the links there so you can watch it before it goes live to anyone else. Hopefully more than a week ahead of time, though I can't guarantee that it won't be just a couple days, because sometimes due to the fact that I'm rather busy, I might be editing very last minute and getting the video uploaded to YouTube. If that happens, I do apologize to my patrons. Anyhow, if you're interested in becoming a patron, there's a link in the description below. Otherwise, without further ado, let's get right to the mail call video. Okay, we have a package here. Uh, this comes from Derek, Pendleton, Oregon. Hi to all my viewers in Pendleton. Pendleton is on the far eastern side of Oregon and compared to where Portland is, which is not on the coast, uh, west coast, but we're not far from the west coast. So I think it's probably a few hours drive out to Pendleton. I've never been out there before and I would love to check out that part of Oregon. Okay, this is exactly what I thought it is. Derek emailed me about what this is. And I gotta say, you can kind of see what it is there. It's a CRT and he packed this incredibly well. Cause we talked about this and I was like, I don't know how you're gonna get a CRT to me, but he did. And I'm sure this is in perfect shape here. Let's slide this out. All right, so what we have here is a CRT, an Amber CRT from an Amdeck monitor. So if you remember my Let's Improve the CRT series where I did some tube swapping, I had a couple Amdeck monitors that had pretty burned in and worn out CRTs. Well, Derek had an old Amdeck monitor that wasn't in good shape, and I think he ended up using it for a different project, but he had saved the CRT all these years. And he said, it doesn't appear to have any burn in, and sure enough, it doesn't. And the whole thing looks really, really nice condition. Like it's not dirty. Normally there's a bit of black soot and stuff on here. It doesn't seem to have any of those things. So I'm really thinking that this might be a really good CRT and it survives shipping without any issue. Maybe a few of the pins are a little bent up. Nothing that I can't straighten out, but it definitely isn't broken. So very cool. Thank you, Derek. So let's take a look at this on the bench. So I've set up and I've plugged in my two Amdeck monitors, the 310A and the 300A. 300A, obviously, as you see, it's plugged into the Apple IIc. This is a composite monitor. And the 310A is the MDA or monochrome graphics one that plugs into early IBM PCs, PC clones, stuff like that. This is currently hooked up to my little test bench, which is right over here, which has an EGA card configured for monochrome. This one runs at 60 Hertz NTSC rate, so it syncs up with the camera pretty well, but this one is running at 50 Hertz, which is the monochrome refresh rate. So you're gonna see some rolling on the picture, which is completely normal. You don't really see that in person. Although you do see a little bit of flicker because of the 50 Hertz, and that is compared to the 60 Hertz, but that's not a flaw. That's just the way it is. So I'm gonna turn off both of these monitors for a second. So one thing that's interesting is that this one has etched glass, so it's sort of anti-reflective, and this one has shiny glass. And remember, both of these had that mesh coating over them originally, so you really wouldn't have seen under the mesh if it was shiny or etched like this. Typically, this etching was done on CRTs to make them a little bit less reflective, which was also the purpose of that nylon mesh that was over both of these. Now, I still have the little post-it note sticker on the side of the monochrome one here, 
Number five, this is from the repair-a-thon that I was doing, or the CRT repair-a-thon. I had originally written dim and four, and then I drew an arrow to five, which, does that mean that I swapped this CRT, uh, number five chassis? I'm assuming it does. I don't really remember all the details of that CRT swap-a-thon. This is the other one. It says six out of 10 and just says cleaned. So it's obviously the original CRT that was in here. I think I must have swapped this one because this would have been the shiny glass just like this. Because really, these two monitors are, for all intents and purposes, exactly the same, except for a little bit of circuitry on the main logic board, or the analog board that is, that allows this one to work with the monochrome signal versus this one that's just composite. Anyhow, here's the CRT that Derek sent, and it looks really good, as I had mentioned while I was unboxing it. It's made by Clinton Taiwan Corporation. And there's the part numbers if anyone is interested. Now, I'm not sure if Derek had cleaned this, but this thing is incredibly clean. Like I don't think this monitor really would have been used very much judging by how little dirt is on things like the yoke here and just the general CRT, like the stickers and stuff. They're just all super clean. I'm trying to make the camera focus on the pins there. And there are a couple that are just ever so slightly bent, but it's very minor and it's, it's not really a big deal. So turning these back on, I had a white background with edit up on this one, the monochrome one. And there's definitely burn in on this CRT. I can see lines where whatever the text was for years and years while this was being used. So it's definitely a little burned in on this. This one on the other hand, looks like it's a little overly bright is definitely not particularly bright. It's still a little dim. Wait, what did I write on here? I wrote a six out of 10 for this monitor. It's fine. It could be brighter though. And if I turn up the contrast to really a more usable level in a bright room where there's actual ambient light, it does start to bloom. So I'm thinking that ideally, maybe if this CRT from Derek is really bright, I'm gonna put it in this one, and then I'll take this CRT, which doesn't look like it's burned in, and I'll transfer that over here into the, the monochrome one, and this will have the best one. And I, I think I'm gonna do that because the 300A, that's the composite monitor, just seems a little bit more useful to me. I can use this with all the Apple IIs, I can use this with Commodores, I can even use it with PCs if the video card has a composite output, and it will provide nice, sharp output. But this monitor, on the other hand, if I'm just thinking about which of the two monitors I'd like to be the best, I think it's gonna be the 300A and the 310, the monochrome one, I'm just gonna use it less. I have an IBM 5151, that's the green monitor that IBM made, that is monochrome. And if I'm gonna use my IBM 5150 in monochrome mode, I'd almost rather use the IBM monitor than this thing. And right now at this point, the 300A right here is the only amber composite monitor I have. So I think it's time to put the 310A aside and take the back of the cover off the 300A. And what I'll do is I'll probably just quickly plug this one into it to make sure that it works properly. And if it looks really good and sharp and everything, then I'll do the tube swap. And then once that's done, I'll put this CRT that's now taken out of the 300 and I'll put that in the 310A. It goes without saying that before you take the back cover off a CRT, please make sure you know how to take necessary safety precautions, as there are dangerous voltages inside a CRT which can hurt you. When I power this monitor up with the back cover off, I'm using an isolated transformer for safety. Just before I take the CRT out of the 300A, I decided to hook it up to my pattern generator, and with a 100% white field, which is an entire white picture, I do actually see burning, and now I do remember that this was here. There's a there's a bar along the bottom here that's quite burned in. Obviously, whatever was being displayed on this thing, there was a status bar. And I can also see where the text was. So clearly this CRT is quite well used. And I'll be really curious to set the brightness and the contrast to a given level on this CRT, plug in the other one. I'll do that just outside of the monitor here. And I'll see if the brightness is similar. I need to try to figure out you know, maybe I should bust out my light meter, hold that up to the CRT and actually measure the light output. You know, why don't I do that? I never use that thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that right now. And then I'll be able to take an empirical measurement from the center of the screen with the controls set a specific way here and just see how that changes on the other CRT. 
Okay, it took a little bit of searching, but I found my light meter. I never used this thing. It's made, uh, I don't know, it says DLM2, whatever that is. There's Lux and Foot Candle, three different ranges, which it shows right here. And obviously I'm gonna have to turn off the lights because if I hold this onto the CRT, there's probably some amount of light getting in from the overhead lights. So I'm gonna turn off the majority of the overhead lights in here, which means you probably won't be able to read the display. I'll take a measurement, then I'll write it down and turn the lights back on. And here are the readings I just took. So the top left was 160, top right 161, bottom left 140, bottom right 137, and the center was 198. So now to connect the CRT to Derek Sant, I won't touch the brightness or contrast knobs. In fact, I'll unplug the power of the monitor from the cord because unfortunately you have to push the brightness knob to turn it off, which I may cause it to change, right? So I'll be able to preserve the current settings and that'll be a great comparison to the new one. As is usual, I'm using my high voltage probe to discharge the CRT. This one does retain some charge after you power it off, so you absolutely need to discharge it first. I've started wearing gloves while working inside CRTs. I found it just adds a little bit of extra protection from getting zapped from components that still are charged. Some of the pins on the CRT were slightly bent, so I'm just straightening them out with a small screwdriver. The CRT that Derek sent me is all hooked up, ready for testing. Incidentally, the part number on the sticker here, the sticker looks perfect by the way, is exactly the same as the one on this monitor, although this sticker is really faded and brown. I did not use the deflection yoke that Derek sent because it actually looks different than the one that was on this monitor. In fact, yeah, it has the same connectors, so it's probably compatible, but this one has two wires that connect on this side and two on that side, and this one has all four that connect on the same side. So I could use this if I needed to, but there's no reason not to reuse the existing one that was from this chassis. I'm not quite ready to power this on, and that's because the CRT is not grounded to the chassis right now. That happens over here on this CRT, these little tongs touch the CRT. So I'm just gonna use some clip leads, and I'm gonna connect up to the ears on this CRT, the one that's actually gonna be powered up, and I am going to connect it to this metal tongs on here, on this one, so the ground connection from this CRT makes its way back to the analog board. Okay, I'm gonna plug this back into the isolation transformer, and hopefully this thing should come to life. If the CRT is good, we'll see that same white image. And remember, I haven't touched those knobs, so it should show hopefully a brighter image than we had before. Here we go. Okay, I hear the high voltage is running. Now the CRT probably hasn't been used in a long time, so it may well not be very bright. I just need to let it sit a little while to kind of come to life, so to speak. At least that's what I've seen happens when CRTs haven't been used in a very long time. First of all, I'm gonna turn the deflection yoke. There we go. And now to let it warm up. I've let the CRT and the electronics and the monitor warm up a little bit. It's been about 15 minutes or so. And I took another measurement with the Lux meter and here are the results. So it's definitely brighter, but it's not dramatically brighter. In fact, when I look at it with my eyes, I don't really even notice a difference. But of course it's hard to compare a to B when you don't have them right next to each other. But it went from 160 top left to 195, 161 to 182 in the top right, bottom left 140 to 163, bottom right 137 to 154, and from the center, it went from 198 to 213. So a little bit of an improvement there. So nothing dramatic. Also though, now that this thing is on, it definitely has a little bit of burn in. I can see where the lines of text were always displayed on this and sort of the edges of the, whatever the computer monitor it was, there's an edge there, there's an edge there, and then there's all those lines. So I'm not sure what content was always displayed on this thing. Whatever it was, it definitely gave this amber phosphor a little bit of burn in. Since the CRT Derek sent in is empirically a little bit better and also the burn in is a little less severe with that bar along the bottom, I'm definitely gonna swap this into this chassis. It's always good practice to unplug the monitor and keep the cord near you if you're gonna be working on it. I have to say that working on this AMDEC monitor is really easy. It's very serviceable, it's simple to get the CRT out, 
without having to take out the circuit board or any other components, which is not always the case for some monitors. Reinstallation of the CRT is exactly reverse of taking it out, just don't forget to hook up that single ground lead that goes to one of the corners. A quick clean before powering it up, and then I'll plug it into my isolation transformer and turn it on. Sending the convergence grid through the CRT helps you align the deflection yoke. And now, a little testing with an Apple IIc to make sure everything looks good. All right, there it is. The swap is complete. And I have to say, even to my eyes, it does seem a little bit brighter. It's still dimmer than it should be, still has some burn in. But it seems like amber phosphor CRTs, unless they're pretty much never been used, they're going to have some burn in. They are just so prone to burn in. As for the CRT I took out of the monitor, which is this one, I'll be swapping this into the other monitor, as I explained earlier. I'll do that at a different time, not on video. And I really have to thank Derek for sending in the CRT to kind of give a little bit more life to my Amdeck 300A. I really appreciate it. And with that, that's the end of this mail call video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do, all that youtube -y stuff. I have finally set up Patreon. So if you want to support the channel, I put a link in the description, or you can click to go through to my Patreon page if you so desire. And that's going to be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. And yes, I'm wearing green gloves. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>